Hello, I'm Becca Romo. And I'm Mickey Van Horn. Thank you for joining us, runners. CSU Bakersfield kicked off Black History Month this past week with a couple of events. On Friday, CSUB held its Unity Breakfast, which featured Bakersfield Police Chief Lyle Martin, as well as CSUB President Horace Mitchell and Vice President of Student Affairs Thomas Wallace. Wallace was also the recipient of the 2017 Unity Award. The CSU Board of Trustees decided last week to vote on a tuition increase after receiving less than half of the requested funding from the state government. The board will vote whether or not to increase the tuition by $270 for each of the 23 universities for the next academic year. Now for our top story. Two former CC Bakesville students are filing a claim against multiple Kern County law enforcement officers. Reporter Julian Manai has more on this story. A claim for personal injuries has been filed against the city of Bakersfield by two Bakersfield College students who were detained by Bakersfield police officers on December 6th of 2016. In a video posted on the NAACP Bakersfield Facebook page, former CSU Bakersfield students Timothy Grismore and Xavier Hines talked about their experience leading to their arrest. At first we were kind of scared and confused still shocked in some type of way, you know, just because it, it didn't it seem surreal, honestly, the way the whole moment, the whole night happened in the situation. Um, right now, we're feeling a little bit more happy, you know, we uh, we're got through our, our charges were dropped and stuff like that, so, you know, we're feeling better. But uh, we still feel, you know, paranoid at certain times, you know, I mean, it's daily things we can't do anymore. Grismore and Hines said they were taking a break from studying for finals to get Taco Bell when the officers stopped them, attacked them, and arrested them near the 1100 block of Valhalla Drive. Both students and representatives attended a city council meeting on Wednesday, January 26, where they spoke about their incident and how concerned they are about the officer still on duty. Grismore and Hines said because of this incident, they aren't able to do certain things they used to do on a daily basis. It was very, it was traumatizing. Like you said, it's a lot of stuff that we used to do on a daily basis we don't do anymore because of that situation. And, uh, yeah, we're just trying to just keep our heads up right now. Stay positive. Bakersfield citizen and Reverend Ralph Anthony said he hopes the city council will look at this as a problem for everyone. For it to take place uh, is not human to continue to take place. To correct it is uh, real human. And... Uh, it will make sense for an intelligent people that want to develop a community that Bakersfield can be and, and has been and will be. As this case continues with both Grismore and Hines, the representatives call for action against the officers. For Runner News Network, I'm Julie Manai. The Women's March brought together thousands of people from around the world to who protested against the violation of their rights. Local participants and students shared their thoughts about the march. Maria Rodriguez has more on the story. The Women's March held on Saturday, January 21st, gained national and international attention. Marchers held signs expressing their motives for marching. The number of people that attended these marches exceeded expectations. Los Angeles had about 750,000 people march. Many of them were from Bakersfield. Kimberly Kirchmer's Facebook post recruited some of them. I set it up super simple, just thinking I was going to take 25 people, and we ended up leaving with 120 people. Kimberly is a survivor of sexual assault, and she marched against it. When sexual assault became locker room talk, I, I just couldn't tolerate it anymore. I was marching to absolutely not normalize sexual assault and not okay it and not let boys be boys, that um, boys will be good human beings. Miel Rivera marched with her mom. She described the environment and how it felt to be there. It really felt empowering to be around this, the, a group of people that felt the same things that I felt. They were there because this was a part of our history. This was a part of democracy to go out there and rally for each other. Be there for the woman that you know or the woman that you see on TV or the woman that stood beside you at some point. It's something that you can look back on and say, you know, hey, I, I went there and I marched for reasons that I believe were right. And I think it's just a great feeling. Students at CSUB who didn't attend gave their opinions on the march. If they want to protest because they feel that they're, they're being uh, mistreated or anything's wrong, then 
that's that's like the number one principle in this country. You could you can stand up for yourself. Like every issue out there, that's a problem in the world we live in today. I hope that they can all come together as one. Some students who chose not to be on camera opposed the march and thought that many of the people participating only wanted social media attention. I'm Maria Rodriguez for Runner News Network. Dozens of students gathered near the student union on Tuesday, January 24th for free tacos. Olivia Calahar has more on the story. Associated Students Incorporated welcome back students with tacos in honor of Taco Tuesday and Week of Welcome. Mariela Gomez, Vice President of Programming for ASI, tells us about the taco truck and why ASI provided tacos from Curbside Kitchen. As part of the Week of Welcome, we decided to have this uh, curbside taco truck for you guys to enjoy. We really want to get all of you on a great uh, start for the spring semester. Anthropology student Gerardo Arzola expresses his appreciation to ASI and the tacos they provided. Oh, the food was great. I uh, had four tacos, and I just really appreciate uh, ASI for you know, giving us tacos. Ilaria Pesco, executive director for ASI, explains the process of getting a caterer on campus and the Airmark contract with the campus. When we had Taco Tuesday, we put it in 25 Live, and when we're in, when we when you um, go and reserve that, you also will see like a section that says, "Are you going to have food at your event? Are you going to use Airmark?" Are you going to use Togo's or are you going to bring in outside food? Airmark doesn't have a exclusive contract here on campus, so that doesn't preclude us from bringing in outside food. As a result, now that could change with the Airmark contract at some point in the university, but you know, there's, you know, so for instance, if you reserve the Stockdale room, the preference now for the Stockdale room is that you use Airmark catering. So if you're going to reserve that space, you need to be, you know, you need to be using Airmark catering. But but there's, there's not that um, exclusivity clause. Clubs and organizations are all welcome to bring a caterer or food truck on campus when the correct regulations are followed. For Runner News Network, I'm Olivia Kalahar. Are you interested in learning about newspaper production? What about multimedia production? Are you interested in obtaining hands-on experience in media marketing, sales, and promotions? The Runner has a place for you. Here are some testimonials from Runner staff members. One of the biggest things is just learning to appreciate other people just for who they are, and it's, it's great because that's what we all do here. Inform readers, students, the campus community of what's going on. A Chinese New Year's celebration brought together students, teachers, and alumni in the Walter Stern Library. Brenda Gonzalez has more on the story. This year's Chinese New Year celebration was held at the December Reading Room, a day filled with food, speakers, dance performers, and a calligraphy artist. Biochemistry major student Leah Levea expressed her thoughts on the food. I really liked the food, and uh, my favorite was the squid. <laughs> yeah, I really liked it. It's not. It's. I'm glad it's not just like Panda Express. There's like d diversity of food. It's not. Th there's more than just you know what we're used to here. You know. It's not like takeout. <laughs> Dancers performed ritual dances that included the sprouting seedling dance and the lion dance. Mathematics professor Dave Grove explains the meaning. Part of this, part of the celebration is also to, for good wishes for the future. So we have to scare away the evil spirits. Um, traditionally, we make sure that we try to go to every corner of the room, uh, but that's usually when we have several lions. So we, 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 there were a few parts of our usual routine that had to be skipped today. Uh, but yes, the, the, we go to every corner of the room, try to scare the spirits away, and you know we try to. That's why, of course, we, the drum and the gong are as loud as possible. 2017 is considered the year of the rooster, according to the Chinese 12-year animal zodiac cycle. Geraldine Stewart, CSUB alumni, explains her thoughts of the event. Uh -huh. So I really didn't know what to expect. This is more. I love the decorations and the video and the food, it's amazing. The official date for the Chinese New Year fell on January 28th. It is a day for celebrating a hardworking year, being with family, and the wishing of a prosperous coming new year. I'm Brenda Gonzalez, reporting for Runner News Network. The Student Rec Center gave CSU Bakersfield students a chance to learn more about services and resources offered through a fitness and wellness expo. 
With workout and equipment demos, the SRC's Fitness and Wellness Expo also has trainers on hand to go over personal goals and assessments. Not only will the staff at the SRC explain the workout, but will allow you to get hands-on with the equipment. Trisha Cervantes, a student athlete and SRC fitness trainer, demonstrates the TRX training bands during the Fitness and Wellness Expo. Kirk Myers, who's one of the nine personal trainers at the SRC, exhibits and explains the new parachute and sled resistance machines. On the right side is our resistance. The higher our resistance goes, the more difficult it becomes. We're going to start off at a walk, and then we're going to put our belly up against the pad, and we're going to turn it into a run simulating a parachute sprint outside. Daniel Serrano, a fitness trainer and advisor at the SRC, explains to us the benefits of signing up for training sessions. Get some goals that you guys want to achieve, as either lose weight, get quicker in cardiovascular system, um, strength training, anything else that you want to improve, that's what we'll try to improve on and we'll help you hopefully reach your goals. The SRC is open to students and members and has plenty of preferences for gym goers. Basil, two seconds. Basil for the win! Yeah! CSU Bakersfield, champions made here. What a moment! National Girls and Women's Sports Day gathered young girls from different schools across the Bakersfield City School District to enlighten them about the opportunities that athletics offer. CSUB Athletics honored National Girls and Women in Sports Day on Saturday, January 28th to recognize the importance of youth sports for females. Sports that were incorporated into this event included cheer, track and field, color guard, dance, golf, and volleyball. Bakersfield City School District Youth Services Supervisor, Lewis Neal, explains the influence that these female athletes give these young girls. We want the girls to come out here, see the university, be empowered, also to also see some female role models out here because we want them to excel and then just being healthy, that also helps them along. Denny K. Pratt, student athlete and liberal studies major, describes her feelings about the event and why it is important to her. Show them new things that they might not have known yet. Um, kind of teach them a new sport, maybe spike up an interest in something they didn't even know they liked. Jason Thomas, Youth Services Specialist at BCSD, states how the student's background can affect their abilities to succeed in school and in sports. From the demographic that we work with, um, a lot of our students face, they have a lot of barriers, a lot of challenges, and it takes, uh, it takes a certain type of people, I think, and then also a uh, certain understanding, but social work helps provide that extra depth needed to actually do something and to help uh, solve some of those issues, help them address some of those issues. This event was held in hopes of inspiring young women and girls to achieve their goals in athletics and in academics. CSU Bakerfield and Grand Canyon's rivalry dates back to Division II, and on Saturday, their rivalry got physical. CCB took on GCU Saturday, February 4th at 1 o'clock in front of its faithful fans. The runners get things going early as Jasmine Barty gets a Dr. J turnaround and to drop for an early 11-5 lead. Asia Williams continues the momentum as she gets an easy steal and cruises down the court for a smooth layup to extend the lead by 8. Barty catches Asia's pull-up attempt and puts it away to beat the buzzer, giving the runners a 16-13 first quarter lead. A break in the action as both teams prepare for the second quarter. Then they pick back up right where they left off as Elise Lofton gets the offensive rebound and tips it back in for two. Barty gets the uncontested layup to cut into the antelope's lead 24-20 right before halftime. Asia Williams gets seen going early for Cal State in the third quarter with his three-pointer, and on the next possession, she goes old school off the backboard to extend its 7-2 run. Right before things get hectic, Alexis Gilbert goes Steph Curry and gets nothing but net. And on the ensuing inbound, a scuffle breaks out that turns into a bench brawl. Twelve players in total were ejected, eight for the runners and four for the Antelopes. Five coaches were also ejected for both teams. After the 40-minute delay, GCU was awarded four free throws. But Cal State responded with a highlight reel from beyond the arc as Addie Wathers gets her only three of the game, extending the lead to 61-53. And the very next rush down the court, Jasmine Johnson finds a wide-open Erica Williams who knocks down a three for a runner's 10-1 run. With the shot clock running out, Asia Williams gets the hoop in the harm as she goes under the antelopes to Pinner and gets it to drop. 
after they made free throw, GCU went down and drained a three, but Cal State wouldn't be denied that day. That situation. Well, the game still has to be played. You know, we knew we had to go out there and still play, finish the game. One of the things that we would just kept telling our girls, just go out and finish the game and compete and win. And so we, we did that. And so that's, that's what's part of the whole thing of us just competing for 40 minutes. And that's the thing that we have to continue to do each and every time. CSUB beat GCU 74-59. The runners improved to a 5-2 record and will face New Mexico State, who is undefeated in conference play at Las Cruces, New Mexico, Thursday, February 9th at 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us from Runner News Network. I'm Becca Romo. And I'm Mickey Van Hoon.